Hi, I'm Gary, and today we're making the Tiger One tank from Airfix. <laughs> Hi there, I'm Gary, welcome to my channel and welcome back if you've been here before. Today, indeed, I'm making the Tiger One, uh, 170 second scale kit from Airfix. It has 39 pieces and makes a model about 12 centimeters in length. It's one of the new range of starter kits, new generation of starter sets. So the design is really very, very good. Comes with paints, paintbrush and some glue and I'll just be using those uh, with just a handful of other things. For pretty much every build, I use side snips to take parts off the frames, a craft knife to help clean them up, tweezers for handling the smaller parts, sanding sticks, I make my own, but you can use things like emery boards, nail files as well, some clamps, or again, you can use just regular clothes pegs if you want, and some masking tape. And if you're using regular masking tape, make sure it's a low tack variety for delicate surfaces. Now, if you enjoy the show, and I really hope you do, please do remember, thumbs up on the button down there. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel, hit the bell and you'll be notified of all the new videos as they turn up on my channel. Enough of all of that, let's crack on and make this amazing little tiger tank. Now, as it should do as a starter kit, this is skill level one. So the easiest anyone can make one of these. And it comes with a token for one flying hour. Now, as a member of the Airfix Club, you can collect these tokens towards a free kit, or you can donate them to Models for Heroes. A link to this charity is in the information box below. Okay, so let's see what we get inside the kit. It opens at the end here. Be careful when you open it because things will come tumbling out. And there we are. Okay, so we have the all important instruction sheet. We have a sheet of tips and tricks for how to make the model. We have a bag of three paints and some polystyrene cement. We have a sheet of decals to decorate our tank. We have a Humbrol number two paintbrush, general purpose paintbrush. And we have a plastic bag containing the actual parts. And there are these three sprues, we call them sprues, three sprues of parts to make this Tiger One tank. Included in the kit is this very helpful before you start leaflet, it just gives you some basic tips and tricks and hints of how to make the model best and make it look good. Um, excellent ideas, all of these. I would also say you could go online and watch my own top 10 tips for beginners. I'll put a link here so you can catch that as well. In typical modern Airfix fashion, the instructions are very clear. They're in color. They even show you where to glue things, where not to glue things. The order is quite important. You put things together in, but we'll talk you through that in a moment. Very, very good instructions. Really, anyone should be able to follow them. There are three paint colors supplied with the kit. First is this camouflage sand color, which most of the kit will be painted in. Then there's some black for a few bits and pieces, engine covers, things like that. And then there's gun metal, which is a dark gray metallic color, which will be used for the ironwork hanging onto the tank and also, of course, the tracks. We might look also at using some of the black very thinned down to improve the detail, but more of that later on. The first thing we need to do, as always, is to give the parts a gentle clean in a mild detergent, say a few drops of washing up liquid in a cup of water. This cleans off any oil residue left over from the moulding process. Now when the parts are dry, I always give the model a light spray of a primer. I think it makes it easier to paint later and in a way it's a bit of a force of habit, 
but you don't have to do this if you don't want to, provided you've washed the kit first. When cutting the parts from the sprue, I use some modelling nippers, but any sharp and narrow pointed cutters will do. Try to cut as close as you can to the part. Some parts also have these bobbles of excess plastic that are needed by the moulding process, so cut them off as well. Finally, make sure you sand down any remaining bits of sprue. Now, you can use something like a nail file or something similar, or you can glue some fine sandpaper to a lolly stick. Time to start, and we take the first parts off the sprue. This is the floor of the hull, and I'm going to sand down the edges to make sure they're prepped. Then we gently apply glue according to the instructions and fit the two lower side panels and these contain the axles for the tracks later on. That done we can slide in this front armoured plate into the hull base like so and then we can also add the rear plate of the hull like this. Then we add the top plate and we're starting to get a tank shape. The next things to add are the upper side panels and these complete the box structure of the body of the tank. After that we can start adding some of the extra bits and pieces including these two exhaust stacks at the rear of the hull as well as some of the protective armour plates that cover the rear of the tracks. Now the instructions say to add these exhaust covers next, but I'm going to do that later. First I'm going to paint the insides of them black while they're still on the sprue. On the front of the tank I'm going to add the machine gun, also the driver's armoured window. And that's the body of the tank pretty much finished, so we'll leave it alone for a good hour at least to set up solidly. On then to the turret. Now the gun barrel sits into this mantlet which has two uneven pegs to make sure you get them the right way round on the axle. With this attached you can put it into one half of the turret, add a little glue to the relevant faces and add the other half. If you want this will allow you to raise and lower the gun barrel on the finished model. Next we add the top of the turret like so, then the ammunition box case at the rear of the turret. A few smaller detail parts, the entry hatch cover on the side, then this little vent cover on the top. Finally a tiny air inlet cover and with my chunky fingers I need tweezers to help. Now the gun barrel and the barrel brake at the front end comes in two pieces and these are glued together like so. Then the barrel can be pushed into the mantlet, just turn the barrel until it drops all the way in. Next the tracks and on this starter set each complete track set comes in two halves, just glue them together. You might want to hold them together with a couple of clothes pegs whilst they dry. That's the construction finish and now we can start to paint. You do need to stir the pots of paint before you start. They could have sat in the shop for a while and the dyes can start to split. So use a cocktail stick or a matchstick to stir them up. The paints are quite thick so it's best to thin them with a little water as you go. Maybe use the lid as a mixing pot. Then start in one corner and work your way round. Now don't try to get the final colour in one go. Use two or three coats if you have to, but don't just slap it on or you'll lose all the detail. Using a few coats helps eliminate brush marks too, but do make sure you leave each coat to dry thoroughly. When it's done, I'll add the exhaust covers I painted black earlier and these get the same sand colour outside. 
Moving on now, and I'm going to apply the gun metal. Now, like all metallic paints, this will need a really good stir. The tracks are the largest part to paint, just take your time. I've painted the wheel rims black already, now I can finish the edges with the gun metal. Don't forget to paint the inside of the tracks as well. With all that done, wash your brush out and so it gets its sharp tip back and you can add gun metal to the molded parts on the top of the hull. These are a variety of tools and things like spare track links. There's also a shovel to paint on the front armour plate and another spare track link on the rear panel. Now once all of these have dried you can add the tracks to the hull and the lower part of the tank is fully assembled. I'm going to put on some decals now. There are very few in this kit so it's a good starter if you've not done this before. Cut the decal you need from the decal sheet but don't cut too close to it. Place the decal in a dish of warm water. I put them face down first as this helps prevent them curling up and then turn it over after a few seconds. After about 20 seconds or so they're ready to use. I like to brush a bit of water onto the model where the decals to go then holding the decal paper with reverse tweezers place it near where it's going and then coax the decal off with a paintbrush and you can use the paintbrush to gently push the decal for fine positioning. Then we repeat the process for the other decals on this tank, on the back of the ammunition box and on the sides of the turret. They can be fiddly but do persevere. Once they're there, let the decal set for at least half an hour. And we are finished. Now you can set the turret by turning it 90 degrees from straight on, locates in the hull and then you can turn it to any position. And that's your model complete. And if you're happy with it, there's nothing more to do. However, there is just one trick that will make the model look even better. Now, what I'm going to get you to do is use a very thin wash of black paint to bring out some of the details. Apply it gently around the outside of the tools on the hull, as well as around the hatches. The wash will settle where there's a sharp edge. It looks like an extra shadow. You can use the wash to emphasise things like these engine covers. Use your finger or a cotton bud to wipe off any excess while the paint is still wet. Now you can go back time and time again to build up the effect, which can look incredibly realistic. Ultimately you can buy things like weathering powders and the like, but really the amount of detail you want to apply is entirely your choice. I think this is a great starter kit for anyone at any level and it's a perfect gift. If you've enjoyed watching, please remember thumbs up on the button down there and of course subscribe to the channel and hit the bell and you'll be notified of all the new videos as they turn up on the channel. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time.